Today is the day I'm excited about Neo. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Guess what? You bought me food? Lions are going to the Super Bowl? Peanut butter jelly? Nope. Actually, today is the day that we get to move Neo over to the Reptarium. Ever since we got Neo, the pie golden child, I have wanted to bring her over and have her part of the Reptarium. People are going to absolutely love her because she has an amazing temperament. So today, it's going to happen. So what do you think the most popular snake at the Reptarium is? Honey. Perdita. Perdita. That's right. I would definitely say my girl Perdita here is the most popular snake at the Reptarium. Every time people come, they want to hold her. And it's just amazing, right? Because she's got that black and white, much like Neo's got going on. And we actually had Perdita here when she was about the same size as Neo. And she grew up here at the Reptarium being handled constantly. And that's one of the main reasons why we might got Neo over here now is because we know if we can get her over here, she's going to have that same temperament that Perdita has. And I have a feeling it's going to be a close competition between Perdita and Neo who's the most popular here at the Reptarium. And without further ado, we've got to actually go get that enclosure set up so we can bring Neo over here. So let's go take a look at where it's going to go. Well, in a perfect world, we wouldn't really have a vertical cage as much as maybe something that has more ground space for something like this. But the fact that Neo is actually still pretty small and the retics do like to climb, I think that this is what's going to have to work for the time being. Obviously, as it gets a little bit larger, it's going to go into a larger enclosure, something like four by four, something like that, eventually eight by four, eventually 10 by six, something on that line. But for now, I think this is a good option because we really don't have any other space. So we're going to kind of do some terracing and some branches and stuff like that in here that's going to really be good. That way, not only can Neo be on the ground, but it can also kind of be dangling all over the place. I think it's going to look absolutely beautiful. And again, it's really more about just getting it over here and getting it kind of habituated to the life at the Reptarium. Why do we call her Neo? She's called Neo, short for Neapolitan. Of course, Neapolitan ice cream is vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. And of course, she is white. She's kind of a brownish black and she's got red eyes. So what better name than Neo, short for Neapolitan? Okay, so let's go talk to Jessica. So she's going to be setting up the enclosure. Jessica, what do you have in mind? I have to fix the background a little bit because it's like a little wonky down here. Okay. I don't want her to get behind that. No, you do not want her to get behind it, please. <laughs> It'll be a pain in the butt. So I've got some branches here. We're going to do a little bit of hardscaping first. So I want to make the space more able for her to utilize. So I've got a few branches I'm going to put in here. I've got some plants to make it look nice. She's going to outgrow this cage so fast. Yeah. But, uh, She'll be beautiful in here for a little bit. Exactly. I'm going to let Jessica do her wonder. And uh, like she said, it's a short term thing here, but at least it will be awesome to get Neo over here. I really like ice cream. Step one is we are going to kind of set the stuff up in here to do the hardscape part. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna put this plant in a plastic bag because I wanna actually foam it into place, but I don't wanna get foam all over the leaves because I don't wanna have to clean it up later. So this makes it easier. You may notice that the majority of the reticulated pythons that we have here at the Reptarium are females, like Gemma here. And that's because most of the time, females are much more mellow and more predictable. Of course, there's some exceptions. We know Lucy isn't exactly the greatest female for reticulated python. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch but females typically aren't as seasonally aggressive. And obviously it's so important here at the Reptarium to have animals like Perdita and other female reticulated pythons, not to mention all the other animals that come on and get held and are more predictable. And what happens is males are just a little bit less predictable. We all know that Night Fury every now and then can be absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Ooh. Give him my shoe now. Stop, 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 stop. You know when you take the shoe out, you know you're going to go up. Okay, so I guess Night Fury's not going to come out today. Now, it doesn't mean that they're aggressive animals. What really happens is that during seasonal times when they're in the breeding season and they want to breed, they are used to combating with other males. And that combat can be a little bit strange. For some reason, during certain times of the year with males, they just get a little bit touchy and not as predictable. That's one of the reasons why I don't take Night Fury out with kids and stuff like that nearly as much as I used to. And I'm the only person that I'm allowed to take out Night Fury at all when we're open because I really just don't want anything to ever happen. 
happen. Now there's always exceptions to the rule and Al is one of those exceptions where, you know, he's a puppy dog tame male. So I'm not trying to tell you don't get a male retic because they're bad or anything like that. What I'm saying is in our environment, we really want to stick with females because they're just more predictable. But like I said, there are certain animals like Al that are absolutely wonderful and he doesn't have a defensive or aggressive bone in his body. He's always an amazing animal and totally trustworthy when we're taking things out here at the Reptarium. Hey Mike, do you know what a VPN is? No. A VPN is actually a way that not only you can protect your IP address, but you can also remotely use other IP addresses to help your internet experience be better. As a matter of fact, NordVPN, I've been using them for a long time, is absolutely amazing. They have the fastest VPN on the market and they have 5,200 servers in 60 countries. And with only one click, you just pick the location you want and bang, you are on the internet. As a matter of fact, one time I was in China, I couldn't check my YouTube account because it's not allowed in China. So what did I do? I just went and clicked Hong Kong. I clicked New York, whatever it was, and I was able to surf my YouTube channel all the way in a country where you're not able to access YouTube. Noah, what, what would you do if you were traveling out of the country and that country wouldn't allow you to play your favorite game? Well, I'd be extremely disgruntled. Whoa, 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 Noah, calm down. With NordVPN, you don't have to worry about that because you can use an IP address from a different country, so don't let your access limit your gameplay. And with NordVPN, you can actually use it on six devices and every major platform. Ah! Are you ever frustrated with your internet service provider throttling down your bandwidth and you can't surf things as fast as you want to? Well, with NordVPN, they actually encrypt your traffic, so no more slowdowns. And right now, you can go to NordVPN slash Brian B and you can get two years plus one month for an incredible deal. So that's right, you go to NordVPN slash Brian B, get two years plus one free month for an insane deal. You want to get on this now. All right, so that's pretty much it for this step. Uh, now we just have to wait for this to set. Once it's hardened, we'll come back and put silicone over it. We'll be almost done. The female here is a smaller girl. So she's, the, she's the one that's actually looking around. You got the bigger guy. He's the male and the little girl right there. The little girl, she'll actually occasionally eat out of this cup. By having my hand up here, it's also teaching her that like there, there's really not a lot to be afraid of here. In fact, that I actually might have some treats for her. If I sit really, really still, keep my hand up here, leave the spot where, I, where she already saw the food come at first. Tiring as this might be for my own, trust me, the rewards are absolutely awesome. Awesome, especially when you get a green tree monitor eating out of your hands. I'm telling you guys, it's just, there's nothing that beats it. We're definitely going to be doing this more often. Hopefully, the idea here is that they don't immediately resort to freaking out anymore. They'll actually start to hear the door open and, and associate that with like, oh, food's here. It's time to get excited. It's time to get start looking around and get a little curious. And that's really what we want them to start doing. So next step is to trim down all the foam that like over expanded a little too much. And then we're going to cover it with silicone and moss and some other stuff. So it looks nice and not all ugly. <laughs> So it's just been my jam lately. I mean, obviously, number one, if you guys don't have a uh, container like this, don't be uh, killing the seas with all your plastic bottles. And then I've been going to Walmart and getting this sweet tea for my water. I'm not, it's a, not a brand deal. I'm just saying that I've been loving this stuff. And uh, so you'll be seeing me around doing this, but uh, get one of these, man. Save the seas. Oh, are we rolling? Yes. Oh, we are, okay. Oh my god. Boom! Back at you again with milk Dan. We kind of threw a bunch of seeds into his water bowl. What? This, this is the weirdest lizard ever because he eats bird seeds, so he's basically a bird. Well, just like a dinosaur, right? Do you know why we keep him on the actual food? On the food? Because he's uh, blind, so he has to feel the food. No. Pretty sure I'm a uh, bar check. I think I know what I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure I'm Misty Mike. <laughs> we keep him on the substrate just because they do actually, like Noah said. Uh, but on top of that, we have to keep, make sure it's extra. <laughs> he's not. But we gotta make sure he's extra taken care of and extra clean because he eats it when he poops and pees. We don't want him eating that, digesting it. Obviously, we don't want him getting sick. Super clean. He eats seed, he drinks seed, he lives on seed. This guy's just basically seed, man. Okay, hey, people ask, does his tail hurt? Well, quite frankly, ow, ow, ow. No, it doesn't. Ow, 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 ow. Ooh, that was a nail. It just doesn't hurt at all. You do have a spiky tail, though. It's really not spiky at all. It's just uh, calisthenics. We put it by your face. Wait. <laughs> oh, it did hit me. It's almost like a beard comb. Wait, wait, wait. Don't mind. He's really getting deep in the pores. He's getting big. Oh, yeah. He's like jumping on. Just don't poke him in his face. He doesn't like that. Is that what you do? Do you go around poking all the animals in the face? <laughs> Whoop. 
you know. Look how chunky this guy is. It's like weird to hold. He kind of smells like a baby's diaper, bro. Sniff him. He kind of smells like a dirty oh, he diaper. He doesn't smell like Yo, speaking of that, have you ever farted and you smelled like BK nuggets? Like, you yeah. know? What's up with that? Once you eat one BK nugget, it's in your biome forever. forever. That makes and it's sense. stuck in your track. Can you wash his butt? Let's wipe it a little bit. <laughs> it doesn't stink. <laughs> it's only his back. <laughs> We're on the last step here. This isn't a bioactive cage, so it's really easy. All I have to do is put these fake plants in, the substrate, and we're all done. That's pretty much it. We just gotta scrape off a uh, Big Bertha and Shrek here and redo uh, Neo's name. Did I mention I really like ice cream? All right, so now the part that I love the most, and you guys know that I've said that I really don't like keeping retics and rack systems. You know, this was kind of a short-term thing with Neo quarantine slash getting her really established. So now let's head over and put her in this beautiful enclosure. I absolutely think she's gonna love it. Again, she's gonna have this to climb in on. She's gonna have this to climb on, get hold closed. It also has some stuff, a little hiding area in the back. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let her and climb in here. There's your new enclosure, little girl. Oh my gosh, I think it's gonna be good. Now listen, this is a temporary solution. I'm not gonna lie, she's probably only gonna last in here for maybe four to six weeks, and then we're gonna have to move her into something else because this is definitely not a really large enclosure for her at all. But this is what we had for the time being. We're gonna move a whole bunch of stuff around here in the next month or so, and she's gonna get something much better, but she's gonna be able to climb. She's got lots of space. Again, you know, the thing with retics is they're much more vertical animals as well. You know, so they like to use that. Look at her already, climbing up top and kind of just using that up here, getting close to the light. But once she settles in, she's just kind of like, what the heck is going on, right? Once she settles in, she's gonna find her favorite spots and she's gonna look absolutely incredible and she's gonna be able to come out and people are gonna love her. She's gonna eventually be another Perdita for sure. So happy to have Neil here at the Reptarium. It's absolutely amazing. If you did enjoy this video, do me a favor. Right here is a playlist you can watch one or two videos. You can also do me another favor, hit that subscription button and turn those post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to somebody and I promise I'll see you in the next one.